It's the Magic Gathering Strat Show. It's a show about a magic podcast. Hello, everybody. It's me, Brennan, your lovable host, along with me. As always, are my two co hosts. It's Sam, the Vault Boy Hunter. Say hello, Sam. Hello, everybody. And Dan, the fan of history. Hello there. Well, hello, Dan. Hello, Brennan. What are you wearing tonight? I'm wearing a golf shirt and Don't khaki tell me. shirt shorts. I like to imagine it. <laughs> this this, this is went way off the rails, guys. Probably. It's kind of magic. <laughs> and I have on glasses. Ooh la la. <laughs> <Sweet. laughs> Alright, we're talking about some standard popper, our weeks in review. I'll go over a little bit of Popper Classic Tuesday since we're recording this actually on Wednesday, we'll actually get to go over it. But no live That's coverage this time. Oh, Dan, making us move our schedules. Yeah, I had the handyman coming in uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. breaking up my ventilation, so I figured that would be a bad thing to have in the background. Yep, yeah, that would be that probably would be. All right, let's talk about Standard Popper this last Sunday on SPDC, April 19th. 11 players, 11 reported. Thank you very much. Three round Swiss top four playoff hosted by the lovely and talented Dr. Chris Baker. First place, Formidable Green. Record. I added a new column for record so we can actually see it here. 5 0. That's fantastic. Oh, stomped wait it. Wait a minute. Yeah, what? They lost to Karakus. That, that was. That's, that's on MPDC. Ah, sorry. This past Did Monday. he win them both? Yes, he won yes. them both. Oh, what the yeah. Hell? Hey, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. It, no, it's it's reasonable to assume that because I'm going to talk about that more in the article and kind of go over the deck because we're going to talk about it in the show. But I just wanted everybody to see mono green, and y'all know how much I love the mono. Wow, five mono every year, folks. <clears throat> I do. This is my deck for my next standard poker video. <laughs> hey, <laughs> wow. please, please do. It's awesome. Mono green. Yeah, everybody will be able to see it. Actually, it goes up tomorrow, so yay. But we're gonna talk about actually one of the runners up because if you look at this, if you look at the thing, yet five zero three two 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 two. Only because of tiebreakers. Did uh, Yaxarul's deck not make it? And we talked a little bit about it on a previous episode. It's the Burn deck. Although, really, it's a tiny bit black. A lot of blue and red. Um, here it is. Whirlwind, Adept, and Omen Speakers are the only creatures. You have standard set of lands, but only one swamp. Very For interesting. For Eternal Thirst. Right? For Eternal Thirst, and that's it. Wow. I don't think it's worth running it for one card, but hey, it's his deck. Do whatever you want. I'm assuming it's a he. Might be a she. I don't know. Could be anybody. I mean, Eternal Thirst on the Rollwind Adept is amazing. It's just... Well, it's yeah. <laughs> but that is Magic Christmas Land. Considering oh, it is. You're the one ba- you're ba- yeah, you're banking on three cards out of 60. But other than that, I mean, it's a great deck. Um, I love Anticipate, as I've made that quite clear on the show. <clears throat> Let's look at an opening hand. Get the magical ice land. I wish they would have brought back snow-covered lands, but, you know, whatever. Swiftwater Cliffs. Lightning Strike. Pretty good already. Uh-oh. There it is. The one of just showed up. It, it looks really bad with three creatures. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just not a big fan. If it had, if one of these was an evolving, I'd be okay, but it's not. Nullify, flurry of horns, the one of Reja Cruz. Yep, lots of one ofs happening here. Um, wow, well, I don't know. I probably mulligan. I keep. You keep. That's that's you have really. There. This is really borderline, huh? Yeah, because look, you have these two. So you have some control to kind of see. Let, okay. Round two, you hold up for Nullify. I'm guessing that's what you're going to do. Right. Or at least hold up for Lightning Strike. And then round or turn three, you can also hold up for whichever one you didn't use last time. 
So let's take a look at the curve first. Look at this giant middle finger of a curve. And you have your tiny little black right in here. Go, go back one slide. Yeah. Uh, I think you have to mulligan this because even if you draw your <coughs> third and fourth land, mm -hmm. you still have three dead cards. Right. You're not playing anything. Yeah, I th think you have to mulligan this. Yeah, I I think I would too. I would keep it. All right. Well, we are going to see what the next six cards are in just a moment, and we can find out. Not much of a curve. It's all two drops and a little spattering of other higher end drops. Wow! Can y'all hear that? It's a helicopter it's right outside. Oh, oh, it's, is it hunting cool. pigs? Awesome. Hunting pigs? No, it's probably hunting injured people. <laughs> it's the life. It's the uh, uh, life flight. Oh, okay. That, it picks people up and takes them to the hospital real quick. That's what they tell you. Yeah. We never see them again. I wonder what happens. Food. <laughs> Soylent Green is people. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. 40 year old spoiler alert coming at you. <laughs> um, okay. The next six cards starts off with an island. So you have three lands, not one that is black. Oh, well. Anticipate. Now, this card I like. That kind of fixes the entire hand. It does. Because then you got, look at the top three. So let's say you cast it when you get it. It can kind of look, we can see what the next three would have been. Another treasure cruise. Ouch. Ooh. A magma spray. Yeah, now you have fuel for one treasure cruise. Well, you do. And a whirlwind adept. But you still can't cast a whirlwind adept. You're I mean, you're keeping mana. the magma spray yeah. off of those three. That's what I would oh, keep. But you... you uh-huh. You hold, well, there you have enough for a treasure cruise. You have tree land, you mm -hmm. have cast your five instants, then you can cruise. But it's, it's true. still, you're way behind at that point. Yeah, I think the biggest detriment to that opening hand has got to be the eternal thirst being included. Yeah. If it was Depends any. If you're, if you're up against another control deck, you will probably outgrind them then with all this card draw. But if you uh, are up against White Red Heroic, then you're yeah. probably dead at this point. Probably. The, mm. the deck itself is kind of weirdly built. I mean, it's got so many one ofs, like a one of Omen Speaker. Right. Why would that be your third whirlwind or, I don't know, another, another, another land, another card draw spell? It's just kind of odd. At uh, least Omen Speaker does something, but yeah. the Eternal Thirst can be dead so often. Right, basically, if you replace the swamp with an island, Eternal Thirst with another Omen Speaker, you're probably pretty good. So anyway. Those oh. are awesome Magma Spray art, by the way. Thank you. It's one of my uh, favorites. <laughs> the, the thing is that uh, against another control deck, once you have the Whirlwind Adept and the Eternal Thirst, mm -hmm. there's nothing they can do against it. Nope. That is true. So maybe that's the, the plan against other control decks that eventually you will, you will have it. And your, your threat is bigger than their threat. And it definitely will be. All right. Well, <clears throat> that's it for the standard popper. Sam, do you have any announcements or what was your week like? Um, nothing really. Um, Did you make it to the shop again? I'm going tomorrow night, mm -hmm. um, Thursday, U.S. time, um, to Cube. I'm so looking nice. forward to that. Um, I actually fired up Magic for the first time in like a week tonight and realized the deck that I was brewing was erased by the server, so that was oh, really... Oh, no. Um, so um, got really frustrated and just logged right <sighs> back out. <laughs> um, and I want to make one of the pre's, so at some point I hope to play probably Sundays. Um, well, that'd be the awesome. Week, so bump it up to twelve players or whatever. I hope to take down Remedio, um, <laughs> in, in any way conceivable. Um, so I'm coming for uh, you. Dun dun dun! Gauntlet thrown down. Yes. Well, I gotcha. Um. I'll get to me in a second, but 
Dan, any kind of announcements or decks that you want to talk about? Any updates? I saw that you played Mono Red. I did. Uh, I think my um, my best magic moment this week has not been uh, published yet. <laughs> it will. It is due on Tuesday. Oh, really? Uh, yes, it's my uh, next trip into Dragons of Takir Limited. Nice. And I, uh, I had a bad run this week, so uh, uh, on the video I published this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So I listened to Limited Resources and they said, oh, blue-white seems good. Oh no, I, I looked at the Marshall video and he was playing blue-white and I was like, okay, blue-white, it's the same in every limited format, like blue-white skies, I can do that. So I figured, okay, I'll go for blue-white and I did not drop a duel. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, nice. blue white seems good. Nice, can't wait. And That'd I didn't awesome. have any any money cards or any bombs at all. <laughs> really? No big rares, no mythics. Just, just good commons and uncommons, and it was totally unbeatable. That's sweet. Awesome. Also had a ton of luck and did a ton of misplays. So I think it's <laughs> very entertaining magic. Nice. I know. Uh, LSV was talking about how this format has a lot of mythic uncommons. Mm. Or what his team was considering mythic uncommons. Yeah, I think yeah, the mythic uncommon idea is uh, detrimental to your uh, limited success. <laughs> well, hey, he did go 0 and 5 at the Pro Tour. <laughs> yeah. He did it day two of this last one, which was strange. Yeah, he he admits it though. He admits that um, limited of all of his magic knowledge, that is the weakest. But I still wouldn't want to play against him. No. In, in any magic related <laughs> anything. <laughs> I think they were reviewing their team process for uh, <laughs> evaluating limited because they all did so poorly in limited. Team Shadow Fireball, yeah. this Pro Tour. Hmm. That's too bad. I, but well, I, it was but weird they were pretty good at like they went from like eight people that they would test with up to like 18 or something. Yeah. I think it might just be too many voices at this point, but I don't know. But isn't that like the average team size at this, uh, for the big teams now? Yeah. I like... mean, it, it always seems like they break apart and then they test in pods. Mm hmm. But now channel by fireball does with face to face games all at once. It just seems like a lot of players, and you know, everybody approaches the format differently, so. Right. Like, what was the other team that they were going up against closer? Was it Pro, Pro Deck? What's that company that makes the Ultra shields? Pro. Ultra Pro. Team Ultra yeah. Pro. Yeah, they, they, have a, they also have a large team. You know, as a team that I think is uh, not a lot of people talk about, mostly because they're non English speakers, but the uh, team. Um, MTG Mint Card. Have you guys seen that team out there? Yeah. Nope. Yeah, it's a team from Hong Kong. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty good, and uh, I've I have shopped at at MTG Mint Card. Gosh, since I got back into Magic, I love their site because if you're willing to um, buy Chinese cards, Chinese language cards, um, you can get often get good deals, like real good deals. So. I know it's an unnecessary plug, but I'm a, I am I look for them actually at the Pro Tours. So, all right. Well, I actually have an update from me. I, as you may know, was in the finals of our Standard Silver Black League. Yay, Brennan. Yay, me. Well um, done. <clears throat> thank you. He came down to punning pugilist and myself. Um, he was playing a blue, blue, white heroic deck <clears throat> with um, all two drop and lower, which I highly recommend. Um, and I was playing my mono red heroic kind of controlly deck because I wasn't. I mean, of course it was aggro, but um, I tried. My, my main goal was to control the board as much as possible so that my aggro could get through. It's just I rarely went, sent burn to the face unless it was to finish off an opponent. Um, it went to three games. Game one, um, he put an ordeal of Heliod on a, um, 
Oh, what's the O four heroic one drop? Yeah, Trailblazer. Yeah, Trailblazer. Um, and he had already he played two of the game lands, so pretty quickly went up to um, 32, 32. 32 life. It came down to um, at the last at the end of my last hurrah. He was at three. I was at five. I had a um, collateral damage stranded in my hand if I just had one more mana. I would have won. But needless to say, lost game one. Game two um, brought in the roasts and just burned everything he played. I kept a I mulliganed where I had a bunch of removal and... Um, I just just did I just burned every single thing I could. Um I even saved up so I'd have two magma sprays or um two wild slashes just cuz I knew he would god's willing or do something against there so just so I could then I had tacked for um what I do I had I ended up with three of the swift spears on the board um cast double pump and one really quickly like turn five or something crazy. Um, then game three, um, similar thing happened in game one where he ended up with a trailblazer and this trailblazer's butt just got too big. I couldn't do anything about it. And I lost game three to come in second as the big number two dumped out on the field. That, that's pretty good anyway. <laughs> yeah. Not bad, not bad. Um, Punning's a good player, um, and I was I was really glad I made it that far. I thought I did pretty good, and I don't feel bad about any of that match. I mean, I, I wish I had one mana, but I, I mean, that's that's just wishful thinking, you know. Sometimes that's just going to happen. Um, but there you go. That was what I did, and I also ended up buying a nice. Um, bought a nice box and finished out the inside of the box for my popper cube. And I'm going to pause for just a second because I want to bring up that picture because I can't find it. Do, 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 tweet tweets. Me. Tweets. <laughs> Great ass picture. Yeah, he's in a shoe box. Oh, did you see what the new packages are going to look like? Yeah, they're new recyclable packages. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It is crazy. Why is this? Huh. I don't remember tweeting that out. Where's my... Hmm. My tweet's not there. Maybe that's oh, why we didn't see it. Oh, okay. Maybe. Well, I mean, I can see the picture because I, I tweeted it out to Adam Staborski. I'm going to get rid of most of this. Doo -doo. Okay, here, hold on. Where are my pictures? There we go. <clears throat> okay. And... So, I got this box at a local shop and it was mostly wood on the inside so I ended up finishing out the inside and made this uh, border here finished out with felt and put some faux leather on the sides I'm gonna put some faux leather on the bottom as well so the cards slide a little easier but this is what oh, I'm gonna put my tokens and some dice and stuff up here but this is what holds my popper cube now that is awesome yep, I thought it was pretty cool so anyway okay it's been my week and we have in absentia Bava with some updates um, he wanted me to mention as I just did punning pugilist one yay punning and I believe Avery was the top rank um, uh, patron. So Avery61 got uh, 10 tickets as well for being the top ranked patron. Awesome. Uh, 
All right. Out there on the forum, please go vote for what is the next league. Um, there seems to be a lot of interest in something like Modern Heirloom or Regular Heirloom, which I'm cool with. It seems to be a great format, but we've got to do something about that stupid Relic Argentum Armor deck. I hate that deck, and they didn't want to do anything about it in the old heirloom community, which is fine. Just ruin the format for... Yeah, I, I just seems... What's it about? Yeah. It... Like, having the the Argentium armor come out reliably on, like, turn three over and over again... Yeah. Uh, it was bad. I thought the... Um, when I played Classic Heirloom, it was the best format I ever played, I think. It was, like... Uh, vintage but without the broken cards and uh, right. you could play like all the standard decks of your mm -hmm. but uh, I heard that uh, Time Vault was a pretty big problem <laughs> when, um, oh when it came out yeah I didn't I wasn't playing then but I can see why because that so, so was like a behind, mythic at 25 cents <laughs> sorry oh no it's okay no no I'm, I'm done the idea behind Heirloom is that you can't play expensive cards mm -hmm. So uh, all your cards have to be cheap, and there's a, a, a threshold level for each uh, rarity. So uncommons can cost only this much, and rares that much, and mythics that much. Mm -hmm. And com there is a limit for commons as well. So the format is sort of self-regulating, because if a deck becomes popular, the idea was that the price would actually go up, so it would be legal next month certain cards mm -hmm. but uh, of course heirloom is not big enough to drive prices i remember the argentum armor deck was around when i played uh, but it wasn't that dominating and a big part i think of the format is that i think they update like quarterly on the prices and everything right so oh, nothing really regulates on price it has to be updated every month it's yeah i thought like because I was talking to the guys that run it back when I got frustrated and I was like, okay, I'm not playing any more Heirloom because I did it like three weekends in a row. I'm like, how often do you guys update based around price or like emergency bans or anything like that? And they're like, yeah, it's quarterly. And I'm like, that's not enough. Like, right. if you're format a, like this. Right. If you're a financial based, um, I don't even think, I think monthly is too short. I I would I would do it, gosh. I guess two weeks just so you have time to build your deck, but as quickly as you can. I mean, like I said, if it's a if it is a financial based um, format, you've got to be able to uh, adapt as quick as possible. It That's, seems that everyone is able to pull prices of traders uh, through some API, so mm -hmm. it should probably be automated in some way. Right, exactly. Um, Heck, the, if nothing no, else. Don't do it perhaps two, every two or four weeks or something like that. Sure. I mean, you, you, could make, you could put your deck on Goldfish, and it'll tell you how much it's worth in tickets on, online as an average. I wonder yeah. if it's a more varied format now that traders dropped so much to one cent. Oh, my God. Well, maybe that broke the format, actually. Oh. It could be. That's true. Although the five cents cards were, of course, allowed, too, so... That should only affect the really cheap cards. Hmm. So maybe it, maybe it's hard to miss six. Maybe it made too many mythics available. The last one was the 19th. There was 11 players. Honorbound, who's one of the big guys. I remember him from when I played. Went 6-0 playing... Oh, I can't figure out. It's a Triskelion combo deck. <laughs> nice. Triskelion? With and Devou Devourer. Wow. And Necrotic Ooze. Um, with Buried Alive, I guess the point is to get a Devourer in the yard. Mm-hmm. And a Triskelion. No. Uh, this this format just gives me a headache. Dark Steel Relic. I mean, Dark I mean, Steel right? Relic. Yeah, there's so probably the reason, a reason the, for it. The reason I loved it so much was that uh, the card pool was enormous, but uh, and it was ever changing. So it had like the the big advantages of standard, 
and it had uh, the advantages of vintage and the worst things were there so it was a, uh, the worst things were gone so it was a brewer's paradise uh, and i don't even like brewing but i was brewing for heirloom i mean when you check out the second place deck it's a white zen zenith esper deck mm-hmm. detention spear is under the price now wow oh my god Day of Judgment, Swords to Plowshares, Counterspell, Dismiss, Mana Leak. I mean, good God, this would not be fun or pleasant <laughs> to play against. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, there you go, folks. Go out there and vote. Yeah, um, vote. Your vote um, will count. I put my vote up. So, yeah, hey, cool. somebody's mm-hmm. getting... Is that me? Oh, I have a Virusware scan. God, I eat those things okay sorry guys <laughs> that's okay uh baba is also he put up today a popper rack dose trimmers deck that i think is pretty good uh we'll look at it in just a second he also wanted me to mention you can go to the when you're at the site you need to be about us and there's a support our site button with lots of different ways not just being a patron although being a patron comes with rewards um of supporting the site and he wanted me to remind everybody that he will be streaming on Friday, 2 to 4 Pacific time, and taking requests and challenges. So let's take a look at the Rakdos Trimmers deck. Now, he had to reverse engineer this um, because he played against it and kind of just figured out basically what he was playing against. Um, so you have Mirror Servitor. Um, that The Mirror Servitor is the 1-1 one, one Mirror that when it dies, or when a Mirror Servitor comes into play, all Mirror Servitors that are in the graveyard also come into play. So, get that triggering Impact Tremors. Uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, Spark Elemental, that's the 3-1 uh, with Unearth. That you have to... Uh, first time it comes out, has haste. Attack for 3-1, goes. It, you have to sacrifice it. Then you can unearth it. And it'll uh, exile at the end. Mm-hmm. Can we go back to Mirror Servitor real quick? Yeah. yeah. At the beginning of the upkeep, if Mirror Servitor is on the battlefield, oh, each that's player it. returns. Oh, yeah, that's it's it. not. It's, it's not, not when it comes on into play. Okay, okay. One. Yeah. So and if it's just, if it's just sitting there, it comes out from the graveyard. Yeah, you just hmm. can continue to get your Mirror Servitors back into your hand, and then Spark Elemental doesn't have Unearth. That's Hell Spark Elemental. Ah. So I need to change that. Because he has the one that has Unearth. Hmm. Yeah, that's the Hellspark Elemental. Okay, then I need to change yeah. that. It's an uncommon. <clears throat> oh, it is? If I hmm. remember correctly. Yeah. Okay, well, he has the one that comes out and has Unearth. That's weird. Why is it like that? Or is this just the one that dies at the end? No, they both die at the end of turn. Okay. Yeah, no, he's running too, because I watched the video. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, Spark Elemental. There you go. Carrion Feeder. Um, that is the black one drop that you can sack things to it and it gets a plus one counter. Can't block. Uh, Mog War Marshal. We all know that. Keldon Marauders. That one. Cathari Bomber. Um, this one I played in my, um, oh, what's that deck called? The Blood Deck. Where you cast the card and all your creatures get plus. Songs of the Damned? No, no that's no. not it. Songs of Blood? Hmm. Song of Blood. Yeah. yeah, Song of Blood. And then, but this one, the Cathari Bomber, uh, it's one in Arachnos for a 2-2 uh, flyer. And when it hits, you have to sacrifice it. When it hits an opponent, you sacrifice it and put two goblins into play. You can unearth for three black and red and do the same thing. Wow, that's actually really good with impact tremors. Oh, yes, it is. Uh, Inner Flame Acolyte is pretty cool because you can evoke it and give something haste and plus two, plus oh. And what happens when you invoke? It hits the ground, causes impact tremors. And also, Reckless Imp, which is the 2-1 flying um, uh, black imp that has the uh, dash for a one and a black, which I actually think is really good. I'm, I'm surprised that it hasn't seen more play. It's actually a 2-2. Two, two. 
It's a two two, not a two one. Oh my god! They can't block. Them, right. So yeah. May but as well if you're two one. But if you're but seriously, if you're <laughs> if you're uh, dashing it out, you're not blocking. You don't care. And lightning bolt unearth, and then the good old impact tremors. If you haven't seen that. Red enchantment, one in a red. That whenever a creature enters the field, it deals one or impact tremors deals one damage to. Is it target opponent or each opponent? It's target. Target opponent. So there you go. Sideboard is just some more tricks. Diabolic edict, teamer battle rage, like trickery, flaring pain. Um, I have. No, it is each opponent. My bad. Each opponent. Nice. Each opponent. Yeah, that's even. Better question mark. For I mean, multiplayer uh, opponents. <laughs> right. Yeah, for that Tremors. format that does not exist because it would be horrid. Sort. Yeah, here's Baba talking about it. So. Do, 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 do. So what have we here? I mean, I think he did a good job reverse engineering. It, 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 I think no it could definitely be tightened up. I know, just from looking at Popper Classic Tuesday, mm -hmm. um, somebody was running a similar deck with um, um, the Innistrad enhan or instant that summons um, three humans. Work really well mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. things like um, just as like a extra. What happened? Oh, that's right. I played against Twiggy. Yeah, you have to sack them at the end. Yeah. yeah, you sack them, but I mean they've already uh, done their three lighting. damage. Yeah, turn um, three, played um, a so I thought that was an interesting you idea. So I mean, there's definitely room uh, for some variation here. So to make the feeder a plus two. <laughs> it looks terrible to me. It's like and, uh, it, it does the um, classic error of mm, okay. being so, a two-color uh, aggro deck. You will die to your mana sorry, base a, a certain amount of the so time. Turn one, carry and feeder. Uh, you even have no anything. fixing. Uh, an well, yeah, I mean he did. But he's I just guessing he on fixing though. At it. Yeah. I think like if he were to sit down and go, well, let's go ahead and put in some, you know. Evolving Wilds and some dual lands that it would only get better. So yeah, and you're not fast enough to deal with uh, the fast Agrix. I don't think. I think you you will be overrun by Burn and Stompy. Kelm Fiend combo would eat it up too. Yeah. So um, Delver will probably just counter your necessary things. Yeah, in the in his. What do you win against? Maybe you have a great game against control decks because of the mirror servitor impact tremor thing. Well, I know he didn't he didn't do any good at all against um, mono black control because that was his first match in the video. Um, he just kind of. That's the worst of the control decks. <laughs> um, it felt really strong. It felt really strong. So. Yeah, that's it's interesting. Yeah, I think he can. If you get the God Hand, you're doing real good because you're you're like everything you do is impacting the board. See, because he has all this stuff. Yeah, but without the tremors, which you have no way of finding, then you, you play like a really bad token stack. Oh no, it's a it's not a good. That's the problem. Is it's like. It's not good enough of an aggro deck to actually operate without the Tremors. Yeah. What other... is? I mean, I know there's no other card like Impact Tremors, but is there anything similar that you could use? Maybe if you... Personally, I don't I don't see the point of the Mere Servitors. If I could replace it with another card like Shared Animosity or something. I assume uh, that if, if you play against Control, the Mere Servitor thing gets out of hand. Uh, but why would it? It has to be in play. <laughs> The... Yeah, so you just need to kill them before they. Yeah, before they're up. Have a turn to kill them. That's not hard. What's that, that red is... enchantment? That what? The, there's the red enchantment. Bombardment, or? Yeah, raid bombardment. Yeah, that's it. That's the only thing that we could come up with because Bob and I had a conversation about it. Um, that's similar. Ish. Yeah, but it's, it's another stat. line of attack, right? So it, it yeah. has no synergy with Tremors. No, it doesn't. I mean, with the raid creatures, the few that are underneath the two power, it does. 
But I mean, you have a raid creature under two power. Oh, okay, it can have two power as well. Not raid, sorry. Um, what's the new dash? The dash creatures. Yes. But hmm. I mean, are you really packing eight enchantments in your aggro deck? Probably not, unless they're rancors and uh, other. You only have two days, guys, uh, or, or two dash guys. The I mean, he's only. Wait, he's only running the yeah, Spark yeah, two Elemental. dash guys total. Oh, yeah. Spark Elemental doesn't trigger it. That's true. Yeah. Reckless. I mean, hmm. why the Carrion Feeders? I guess to get the Servitors back, but I mean, that just doesn't feel all that great. I mean, definitely, a, I think Impact Tremors could impact Classic Popper, but I feel it more in like a red-white deck and less in this style of deck. Yeah, it's a, it's my natural thought as well that the the white tokens deck is so strong that maybe you could fit impact tremors in there and gain some resiliency against control. Hmm. Maybe. But yeah, I I, I like what they've done here. It's, it's interesting just... that it's it's an entirely new type of deck. Right. Well, I mean, it's a new type of card, too. Yeah. I mean, that effect is just pretty pretty yeah. neat. So. Yeah, th this kind of card I would have expected to see only in a, um, like a commander, commander, uh, like 2015 or 2016 or whatever the next commander set is. I mean, it feels like it, they pushed it to make it a common, but whether or not, you know, that's good enough to actually do anything... Like, right. Mono Green won both standard popper <laughs> this week. So, I mean, that's true. they did something right, and that's the elk herd, but. Ugh. Okay. Okay, here's what we need to do the, uh, the uh, Mono Green ramp, elk herd, and Orox herd. Herds. Um, Oh so my it's, gosh. It's mono herd. So slow. <laughs> mono herd post. Herd post, yes. Yeah, herd cool. post. Lols. Dream of big green in <laughs> Yes, exactly. There are 21 cards with the name herd in them. Mm -hmm. We're doing it, guys. We're doing it. <laughs> mono herd. <laughs> mono, mono herd. Wow, you better have some. Herd is the some, word. Yeah. You better herd that ramp. Because you need a comments. lot of it. Uh, well, two of them are shepherds. Damn it. Okay, uh, forget it. Shep herds. I don't think we can get there with seven. Damn it. What What are they? There's elk herd, uh, orok herd. Blizzard herder. Akiki blizzard herder. That's red. That's his word. Nah. It's from Kamigawa. Arux herd. Elvish herder. Herd nar. Jackalope herd, what Jackalope herd, Matinda herder, um, and then of course the elk herd, which is just the best of the herd. I don't know, and rock herd and the jackalope herd is actually not horrible bad. Isn't that the four or five? For it's like a four or five mana? for four, and for when four. You, if you cast a spell, you return it to your hand. Right. But I mean, just don't cast any spell else. You're clear. You're good. <laughs> right. Golden. Don't play magic. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in its defense, it is a rabbit beast. That's very cool. Yes. So. I think Night, we have Night of the, the Lupus. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, that's actually going to bring us to my weekly request for F&M. You make it happen, I'll make it happen here, that's right. Pictures, vidges, anything that I can do to help you out, get this, get the word out. Come on. It's a great format. You can help people starting out in the game. It's easy to, easy to understand. And it's actually competitive and fun. Look, mono green. What, who, who the heck would have thought that? What new player doesn't want to play mono green? Yeah, big old things. Elf, elk herds, not elf herds. That's a whole elf different. herds. That's a different format altogether. All right, let's look at 
The Popper Classic Tuesday. Dino Bears roll into the six hey, out. Yeah, Dino Bears. Look at you, Den. Woo-wee. We With almost. Days. Yeah. We lost two uh, games. days. Look at that. He's been spending the money. I'm trying to make this the perfect deck. And look, see? You spent money and you won. And look at the... It takes got, money to make money. It's got What's the that? three Jeskai stages, mm. which is really good. Um, Jeskai Sage. Pictures, 23, 16 lands. You know, just all the good stuff. It's all the good stuff. Yep, down here, Hydroblast, Stormbound well, What's guys. up with the Whipper Snags over Snaps? I can't oh. agree with that. Where is it? Oh, right here? Maybe this is the extra point of damage... Uh, I think this has been tested enough. Hmm. The deck. So you think Snap? Snap's just better than Vapor Snag? Yeah. Dano Bears, defend yourself. But he's I think he has, he's not running enough islands to do Snap. That might be it, but uh, you still have... It's still not unheard of running 16 islands and 8 cantrips. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I, I would run 17. Like okay. to exclude, I am still questioning the repeals, but they must be great against Stompy. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the fact that you can cantrip off of them, I think. I don't know. I've always had a good spot for a pill. I think they yeah, one you off. have 16 lands, so what can you yeah. repeal? So you can only repeal one drops. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, yeah. you're, yeah. never, you're never sending a... Uh, Mere enforcer back. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. You can repeal uh, one mana goblins, as he did several times, I think. And you can also repeal the scattershot archers, which of course is. Ah, scattershot archer, yeah. I mean, he yeah, and ag- pin, but. against the other Delver matchup, you know, repealing a Delver for one blue mana after it's flipped is really nice. Yeah. Um, against Rakos Angler, though, it's this horrid. I guess that's what you're <laughs> yeah, running. Re- re- yeah, oh no! Angler, I mean, <laughs> I, Just bring in Coral Net or whatever that one is. Whatever the uh, is. yeah, Coral Net. Enchant only. Oh, Maybe green or white? white. Can't. No, mm, that doesn't work. work. What do you do against that vapor big old snag? Thing? Yeah, vapor snag. Yeah, vapor snag is a really good answer because it it's not going to come right back down most of the time. That's true. So, no graveyard yeah. hate. I guess without the cruise, graveyard hate is less necessary. Ah, uh, yes, no cruise. Forgot about that. Um, it is yeah. the graveyard hate is that it's so inefficient in this deck because yeah, you, you, don't you can't play it. There's no synergy yeah. with it. Yeah. Right. That's too bad. All right, let's see what rounded out. Mono black came in second, which. Doesn't seem too surprising. Um, goblins in the top four. We all love goblins. Do we? Yeah. Why not? Of course we do. They're red and aggressive. But it's it's like everything I like to play. Yeah, Mikey K would cry, uh, scream, Sparksmith! I hate Sparksmith. <laughs> it's on this list, but Sparksmith is great. It's pretty good. All right. What well, we got? Uh, look at uh, uh, the, the Goblins list. His, uh, his matches. The guy who lost the semifinal oh. against Dano Bears. He ran into Delver, Delver, Delver for his last three rounds. Oh, my gosh. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, who yeah. I paired off it gets the, in the top four? Not down again. Arr. Yeah, <sighs> poor dude. Oh, there we yeah. actually see Sign of Justice's uh, nice name for his deck. Yeah, we're not going to go over that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. If you can read it, folks, then Don't you're old enough to know what these are naughty words. Kuldatha Boros. Boros Kitty. Boros yeah, Kitty, Boros Kitty is still doing work in, mm-hmm. uh, in this tournament. It's, it's a lot Rainy. better now that Treasure Cruise is banned, I think. Yes. And white, the white weenie, weenie. mono white, I guess. And the order of the Letibir. 
You know what, what I've seen? That? I've seen Order of the Ebon Hand um, show up in more mono black builds lately. Just in that match that Baba played with the Impact Tremors deck, the guy was running. No, oh, that's so. right. Four Bone Splitters. That's a lot of Bone Splitters. That's a lot of Bone Splitters. I mean, it's a crazy efficient card, but. It's mean, quite if, mini. Yeah. if you absolutely need a Bone Splitter, boom, you got it. <laughs> it helps yeah. against affinity quite a bit. You put on your guardian or your golem. Your your small uh, crappy guys can uh, trade with the four fours. Yeah, drop it on a sky fisher. I mean, that's true. Mm -hmm. Or a Cathar. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, that's just gross. Yeah. I'm gonna attack you, and then I'm gonna block you, and then I'm gonna win. It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, this nice. is really classic white weenie. Everything is there. The four bone splitters, the racer golem. Yep. The acolytes. Out of the board. Yeah, that's a good oh, look at look at this. Oh, NBC, oh, NBC, yeah. NBC. Poor dude. Ugh. Dude. Yokai had his number. Right. But he had to beat NBC three times. <laughs> that was not gonna happen. Oh, it's the classic matchup: white weenie against mono black mm -hmm. control. Good against evil. <laughs> Delver? Is it Delver? It is Delver. Ha! That was uh -huh. funny. You 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 pond. Into the royal, nullify. No white. Oh, two off counterspell, but four off nullify. I think Why? that could possibly no. be backwards. Yeah, you got to switch that. There's no, there's no way that's that's the good that's the good mix. What? <laughs> yeah, they probably strange. should run the four counters, four essence scatters, and then worry about nullify at the end of that. No, nullify is better than essence scatter. And no, it's no, it's not. Not in classic popper. What hours are you really looking out for? And it's essence scatter is a way more splashable card. Yeah, uh, you're right. And yeah. look at his sideboard. The, <laughs> negate. I don't think he was all there. The three negates. Oh, nullify is yeah, anticipate. That's all you need. Did oh, you nullify the, is anticipate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes a hell of a lot more sense. I guess, yeah. I like, you know, maybe Brainstorm or Preordain in here, but yeah. Wait a minute, is anticipate better than Preordain? Hmm, maybe he's testing it out. I don't know. I think Preordain's probably better in a format that you can actually play it. Yeah. You, only get to look, you only get to look too deep. Yeah, Maybe. but... Is it better than Brainstorm? Yeah, no, Brainstorm would probably be better in this case. <sighs> Although there's the mythical Brainstorm lock. Well, yeah, but I mean, he is yeah, running Evolving the, Wilds. Yeah. Yeah, which and is actually... No what was that? That uh, the Brainstorm lock is not real. No, it's not. It's the card you would have drawn anyway. <laughs> it's... <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why people seem to think that they have done something to themselves with the Brainstorm when it's just... Those are your cards. I mean, there's no lock. That's just the next two <laughs> is what that is. I think it's, it's a real stupid. thing in older formats, like you know, vintage, they have a right to say that, but not anything else. Is the format so. still too fast for exclude? I think the, the is it control decks sort of gain their power from four excludes? Hmm. That was the I mean, why is he running into the Royal over I don't know. It seems that anything? the one off into the Royal is something that just happens to some people. <laughs> you, you have to have a one off into the royal. It's just part of it's just part of playing magic. Yeah. I don't I don't I've never had that happen to me. It just happened in my deck. It, like what? I think what there's the a bomb you can get for that and then it goes away. <laughs> a bomb. A, a salve. Wow, this four. Okay, here's a Rakdos um angler. I don't know if Rakdos anglers. That's fun. 
Two yeah. anglers? I don't think you can call a deck angler no, with only, only have two, two anglers. And Salty Scavenger just doesn't seem all that great in Classic Popper. Oh, Angler looks a lot better than... Than Scavenger, right? Yeah. Yeah, I would but definitely it, put it... If you I look would. at the Affinity decks that play the 3-3 three, three Flyer, mm -hmm. uh, the reasoning behind that was often that when, when Delver was strong in the metagame, you needed 3-3 three, three Flyers. Okay. Uh, but... A Sultai Scavenger doesn't look as strong as the Affinity Flyer. I mean, you would think a Rakos, Rakos deck has enough tools in its toolbox that it can get rid of Delvers a lot more easily. I mean, just run more Disfigures. I mean, and I thought Chainer's hmm. Edict was the preferred edict over Diabolical at this point. I mean, it's not like he did great. He went 2-2. Two and two. That's true. Well, why would you be running this figure in a Rakdos deck when you have access to cards like Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning? Of course, he's yeah. running almost a full set there, but... I'd put another one in. I don't know. That's weird. A one-of disfigure. I don't get it. Yeah. Huh. All right, well... And just one edict in the sideboard. <laughs> hey. Strange. Exploding robots. And this is just affinity. Yeah. That was yeah. a creative name for affinity. Because <laughs> it has fling, you explode them. Don't you just explode the ATOG, which is actually technically not a robot? <laughs> but, he, the a -tog. <laughs> but he eats robots. He does eat a lot of robots. He Part does. of this complete breakfast. And then they explode out of him, perhaps? Oh, I see. He gets the diarrhea. This looks like a fairly stock affinity list. Two flings. Yeah. For the search wellspring. Rays. Yep, for the... Uh, for Still Tron. Still for Tron. Tron. To prophetic priest. Hmm. I think Prism is way too slow in affinity. Really? I think yeah. that... That's not what you want to be doing on turn two. Yeah, Where's the spheres? Not. Yeah, those should be two it often spheres. spheres. Hmm. Because you can't uh, gain cards out of them. Ah. All right. But ter well, from Terrarium, you uh -huh. can. And, uh, so, sort of, it does the same job as the Prism, but faster. Right. Love the 4 4 4 3 sideboard. Hmm. Well, that's it, folks, for Classic Popper Tuesday, which, sadly enough, brings us to the end of the show. Ah, <sighs> the end. Please visit us at magicgatheringstrat.com. YouTube is at Magic Gathering Strat as well. Patreon, we talked about it earlier, slash Magic Gathering Strat. There's all kinds of rewards. We're looking for our next goal, which is 200 a month. Want to do that? The leagues, we get some sort of weekly event happening. Monthly. There will monthly, be one, excuse me. one monthly league event. a month instead of one league, league every two months. It's pretty cool. Twitter, if you want to follow at Magic Gath Strat, get all the latest news and updates. If you want to follow me, Cerulean says, hi, hello. And if you want to follow Sam, it's SPO7677. Facebook slash Magic Gathering Strat. And don't forget to tell all your friends that you're a cool kid because you subscribe to us on iTunes. You can now listen to it on your Apple Watch. That's right, folks. The Apple Watch is real. I don't know why you have one, but if you do... Totally real. So, for this week's show... Wait a minute. Yes? I have a question to the listeners. Uh, I think uh, we have a pretty steady listenership. And uh, mm -hmm. I also think that we need to innovate. So, uh, I would like you listeners to make some suggestions. What do you want to... Uh, about new segments for the show... So, are there anything you want to see on the show? So, let us know. Oh, yeah. We got comments. 
emails, Twitters, anything you th can think of that would yeah. make this show more informative and or entertaining. I think We're the best way is it. the YouTube comments or uh, on the. I mean, I respond to anybody who tweets at me, so feel free to. If you have recommendations or anything, Twitter, and then we all check the comments on the YouTube videos right. all the time. Yep. So, um, but Those yeah, get monitored. <laughs> we're always welcome for suggestions. Nothing is too insane. Besides, play more modern, and then. We would be like fund us to play more modern yeah. guys. Come on, it's expensive. <laughs> exactly. I would start a GoFundMe campaign. Yes. <laughs> I, I I'm going to play modern. more modern after modern masters. After stuff. modern masters, yeah. After yeah, modern cool. masters, dare too. buy modern stuff again. No, I'm not even trading for anything modern anymore. Nothing. Modern's like a big financial bomb right now. Right. I mean, I know they announced that um, Vidalion Click is Click is getting a reprint today. Oh, surprising yeah. nobody! But yep. um, it's a rare, so uh, no, a mythic. I mythic. think they left it a mythic. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. So yeah, I think mythics will comments. be different we this time them. for Modern Masters because uh, the print run will be a lot bigger, at least in paper. Mm-hmm. So I think that even the mythics will come down this time. Probably. Hopefully it will it's... crash some of the stuff down pretty low. I think so... it will. Of course, we'll online the soon. supply will be the same as last time. Right. On and especially with all the flashback drafts, there is plenty of stock online. Yes. And of course, the mythics in Modern Masters did crash, except uh, a few chase ones. Right. Wait. Wait. Go ahead, yeah. Boy, boy, boy. All right. Well, thank you for listening. And for the show, I am Brennan. I'm Sam. Woo. I'm Don. Woo. <laughs> and this has been the Magic Gathering Strat Show. Magic Gathering Strat. Do, 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 do. Magic, Magic Gathering Strat. Strat. Mm. Mm. <laughs>